Okay, so this is part three of using Stata to clean up a name string and just isolate the first and last name. Um, okay, so going to move on to a regular expression here, but at first to this uh, double comma operation here with uh, line 54 and 55. So we have um, the possibility of multiple commas inside a string. And so what I'm doing here is I'm going to say, I'm going to use sub and string to look inside my nib name for commas. And then sub and string will only let you do the first n times. Um, so that's why I have here, I'm going to do it the first two times. I'm going to replace the character comma with the string comma and all uppercase. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look inside my nib name for the string comma all in uppercase and replace that with a comma only one time. So that's why I have that one there. So that means if I ever had more than one comma, the second comma is gonna show up as comma all in uppercase, okay? And then I'm gonna split on that. Because if I ever have two commas, I'm thinking that's kind of a situation like um, Rockefeller comma John D comma executive and standard oil. Okay, and I wanna get rid of that second string after the comma. So I'm gonna parse this on the word comma, which is the string that I use to denote there being a second comma somewhere. And I'm gonna generate this variable CMA. And then I'm gonna drop a nip name, and then the part that came before, that second comma is CMA1, I'm gonna rename that my name. So that's what I do there. Okay, and then I have, of course, CMA2 is that part that came after that second comma. So I can either add that back later if uh, after I've extracted the first and last name, or I can just forget about it. Maybe it's just a job title or something uninteresting, or maybe there's information there that I do want. So you could do it either way, depending on what your needs are. Okay, moving on, we have gen backward equals one if, and then I'm gonna look inside that regular expression. And so I'm gonna use this regular expression, and you have to use quotes to denote you're talking about a string. And then these parentheses at the beginning and the end talk about the sub-expression I'm looking at. And then I'm looking for the specific characters inside these brackets. And then the dollar sign means I'm gonna look at the end of the string. So basically what I'm looking for is, I'm looking for a period to end the string. I can't just put a period in there because a period in there means any character. I have to use the backslash to indicate I'm looking for the actual character of a period. Okay, so I'm gonna say that I'm looking for this, this uh, string. I'm gonna think that this string is in there backwards if it ends in a period, but there's no comma in it. What I mean there is if I have Rockefeller space John space D, that ends in a period, there's no comma. But if I, if I treat every string that with no comma as if the last name is the last word, then I would get D as the last name and Rockefeller John as the first name. That's not what I want. So I want to indicate that that's messed up and that there ought to be a comma there um, when there isn't one. So this is using a regular expression to note that the last character there is a period, then it's probably backwards if there's no comma and it ends in a period. Okay, and then here I use the egen function and the particular ends function within egen. And if I think it's backwards, then I'm gonna take the head or the tail of this and make that the last name or the first name. And then I'm gonna say, um, if I think it's backward, then the head of that, so the head is the first word that appears before the, basically the, the parsing string. If you leave it blank, it treats a space as the parsing string, but you could also specify it with ends. Um, I have not specified it, so it's just space. So if I have Rockefeller space John space D, head will just be Rockefeller. Tail will be everything after the first space. So it would be John D. But if I put last, it would just be the last word of the entire string, and then I would just get D. So I actually clearly want to use tail in this case to separate off the first and last name. So in this case, I'm actually already done. If I think that I've done this right, then I actually have the last name and the first name for everything that appeared in error um, as a backward string with no comma. Okay, so that's um, the end there. But of course, not every string is like that. So um, we're gonna have to do a little bit more work. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna basically reconstitute um, the nip name, and I'm gonna say it's my nip name last, which I just made, plus a comma space, and then my nip name first, if backward equals equals one. Okay, we're about to get into another complicated function, so we'll start part four in a second.